<laughs> Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Mad Mom Looks Podcast. My name is Sim. Along with me is my co-host, Sheikh Amir Saeed al Makrabi. Today. You're on Makrabi today. Mm. You are truly on Makrabi, right? I got this from you, actually. This is a gift from Sim. So I'm wearing it today. Yeah. In our first first time back in the studio for three months. In three months. Mashallah. Mashallah. It's Mashallah. great. It's great. COVID-19 is almost over. Yeah. We have uh, some wonderful guests for you guys this afternoon. Well, who do you guys care whether it's afternoon or evening? It's on YouTube. <laughs> 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 it's so stupid. Uh, it's brother cute. Abdul Karim on your bottom right-hand corner of your screen. And Brother Raul from Ohala Foundation. Sheikh, before we started the show, we were debating about what Ohala meant. We started Googling it, and uh, I'll let you guys go ahead and, and uh, start it off and introducing yourself. Brother Albert Green, why don't you uh, start things off and let everyone know what your foundation and uh, what you guys are all about. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum. Ohala Foundation is uh, the Latino Muslims of Chicago, and, and the name, the root of the name we were searching, we wanted to find something that's going to be relatable to both the uh, Spanish-speaking audience and then connected with the Muslims as well. So historically speaking, Ojala, actually Brother Raul could probably explain a little better because it's his native tongue. But Ojala is coming from like uh, like God willing, very similar to Inshallah, right? So this is like from the days of Andalus carried through the Latino culture to today. So like, you know, probably 30, 40% of the words in Spanish today, their roots are of Arabic origin. Mm. Uh, so, so you're not Latino? No, I'm not. Okay. You can pass off as some uh, Andalusi type. Andalusi <laughs> type? <laughs> there's a lot of Andalusi. There's Abdullah. There's all these other Andalusi. <laughs> I, no. call him, I call him Puerto Rican. Puerto <laughs> Rican. Because he's with me. I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> so should. I call him Puerto Rican. He's Puerto Rican. I think Abdul Karim Al Andalusi has a nice ring around it. That's beautiful, actually. He's <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> no, you're making this into something else. <laughs> No, Michelle, it's great for marketing. <laughs> <laughs> Goofy guy. But uh, yeah, uh, uh, Brother Ro, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Uh, yeah, Ohala Foundation. Uh, we are a Latino Dawa organization. Uh, that's our primary goal is to uh, make Dawa, you know, and it comes in many, many um, challenges. It comes in many. Uh, ways, you know, f feeding the miskin and doing classes and, and there's so many things that, that uh, we're involved with and uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, and that's what it is. Ohala Foundation is a family also. You know, we're family. We're a family of believers who, you know, uh, we come together as much as we can to be together, the unity of the believers, yeah. to, the prayer, to f eat together. You know, Muslims love to eat together. <laughs> you know, and, so, and, and Latinos love to eat together. So we Latinos and Muslims, it's like a perfect marriage. Mashallah. You know, so people usually like to know the origin story, right? So um, uh, every organization has a beginning, and it started for a certain reason, right? So um, did it begin as a place for the Latino Muslims to learn about Islam? Uh, was it more of like a counseling thing? Was it more about education? Like, what, what's the, what, how did, how did, what's the origin story basically? Alhamdulillah, uh, actually, you know, many, many Latinos, um, they want a home. And so uh, we find it difficult, brothers find it difficult. I'm talking about brothers who don't know the, the English language, who have, you know, the Latinos, their sisters as well, who entered into the fold of Islam, who took Shahada. So, um, Historically, you know, the, these brothers and sisters, they, they go into the masjid, to whatever type of masjid it is, and they'll take shahada, alhamdulillah, you Muslim now. So now, how are these people going to learn? How are they going to learn how to pray? What are they going to follow up? How are they going to follow up on the salah? So the imam doesn't speak um, English <laughs> good, uh, and definitely doesn't speak Spanish. So how is this individual supposed to learn the deen? He doesn't have a place to go. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have a place to go to learn these things. And it's, it's Alhamdulillah, uh, Allah Zawajah took people from different, I mean, we're, we're from A to Z on the, you know, social ladder, you know, that's what, that's just like uh, 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 the, the, the early believers in Medina, you know, from A to Z on the social ladder, you know, so Alhamdulillah, and um, we, uh, we all had the idea, brothers had the idea of, of bringing, making a, a place where we can come together 
and like you said, the the, the teaching of the deen, the the, the teaching of the the seed of the Rasulullah yes. sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the 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 being family, being yeah, family, because that's that's what it's about. Being a, it's more than just a, an organization, and a build, you know, a play. It's about being a family of believers, you know, and uh, that's how we ended up uh, coming together. We all had the idea of uh, something for Chicago because there's so many Latino organizations across the country. Okay, and they actually some came and 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 wanted our assistance yes. in in doing some work for them. And alhamdulillah, and, and and of course we did. But uh, we needed a home. We needed something. This was all good what we were doing for the other communities. But what about our community? What about our backyard? And so we, uh, a group of like-minded individuals, uh, we joined together and. Uh, that's how all founded Ohala. So you're one of the founders too. Yeah, yes. Mashallah, for the barakallah. That's amazing. Alhamdulillah. Oh, now, where are you guys located in, in Chicago? So, so we haven't. Uh, we're in a transitional state at the moment. Uh, we're looking to set something up uh, very, very soon on uh, on 63rd and Holman, inshallah. Um, so that's where we're at right now. Where okay. we, we we don't have our our place right now but inshallah we're going to open it soon it's going to be community center we're going to uh, have classes on on foundational islam you know f classes on salah yeah. classes on uh, the sira classes on, you know we're going to we're trying to get the place as we speak yeah. mm -hmm. and so inshallah inshallah, inshallah. well so, go ahead so actually we have a lot of stuff going on with the chicago islamic center like you said on 63rd and home and inshallah we've done classes there you know, right before COVID, we had started a tough year class we were mm. doing, and um, now that things are starting to open up, we're gonna be operating out of there primarily, inshallah. inshallah. But, but generally speaking, we haven't had a location. But to take the history back a little bit, um, you know, 20 years ago, uh, I, 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 I am Caucasian. Alhamdulillah, you know, Allah made me that way, Mashallah. right? But I grew up in a Latino neighborhood, right? And I grew up amongst Latinos, so my first wife is is Mexican so our children obviously are mixed culture and my in-laws were were Mexicano so when I would when I started getting like serious about Islam and trying to to get myself all the way into the Dean you know I wanted to bring them with me I wanted to bring everybody I cared about with me so I'm coming to a masjid you know predominantly Arab masjid and, on, and I'm trying to bring them to events and even our nikah, you know, like to, to uh, you know, all of our nikah was done in, in a particular masjid. And, um, you know, rather than talking to them about Islam, they would say, hey, I have some projects, you know, like I'm trying to sand my deck or something. Or I have some garden, like like uh, talking down without, inshallah, like the intention wasn't there that they're talking down to people. But, you know, what they're, they're doing is like uh, he's a Mexican, so he can like work on my house oh, man. instead of he can be my brother and the dean and like from that point on i ran into this over and over and over again like muslim restaurants of all ethnicities throughout the city of chicago they typically have a latino working in the kitchen and more often than not we would get these horror stories like oh they never talked to me about islam i never heard about it and and they're like giving them slave wages they're taking advantage of the fact that a lot of them didn't have papers so they're paying them less you know half the wage or telling them they're not going to get anything this week business was slow so i mean we're getting people furious so at the same time that i'm going through this in my little bubble there was another group of sisters that started a group called latino muslims of chicago mm. so that's going back 15 to 20 years and alhamdulillah like they were active but um they weren't quite able to do all of the work that we're doing. So they would do things that would benefit the sisters because, I mean, that's a whole nother issue, but like Latinas marrying into Muslim families, we would find a lot of abuse going on. And to this day, it's a major issue. And now at that time it was one thing, now it's it's a lot of green cards. Green cards. Brothers, oh, no. brothers from overseas and in here in the States, like taking advantage of Latinas f for the sake of, uh, they don't know what their rights are in Islam. And then they take advantage of them for a green card, and then once they get the green card, they bounce. This is something that's oh, just like normal to hear about. This is this is maybe once or twice a month. No way. Yeah, yeah. yeah very normal. Very normal. Very yeah. normal. So, so how how are these sisters finding? Why why don't they go to like an organization such as yours to find a proper husband? I mean, is that or is that one of your missions as, as well? That something to 
help the community and, and a lot of the sisters and the new converts know navigate their way around it because sometimes when you're new to islam you might just think oh all muslims are my family and mm. i can trust everyone and this is how he just shrugged that he, <laughs> this is, he knows what you're talking what about we, because this is how we used to think uh, remember when we started practicing islam we went uh, we would go to the muslim world and we think oh they're muslims yeah. we're gonna they're gonna love us and, and take care of us but yeah go ahead but anyways yeah yeah, I mean, wow. that, that's what it is. And, and even though um, some go that route, some go the route of going to the masjid, um, but you have such a cultural difference, right? And I hate to say it, but excuse me, a lot of times the imams, they can relate to, let's say, the Arab brother. Mm -hmm. They're from the same country. They're some of the, from the same village. And, and rather than telling the brother, like, you know, this is haram, like this is, you know, be just, treat, treat this woman the way she's supposed to be treated according to Islam, it's like God, be patient. Like the, the amount of sisters that we've heard, be patient yeah. oh. with beatings, physical, the, verbal you know, you abuse, know, you know, you know. and 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 I hate to say it, but like it's been more than one situation where the sister winds up eventually. She she's been enduring so much abuse. She winds up straying from the path of Islam. Of course, you know, like it's in her heart. Yeah, but she just had it beaten out of her physically. No, 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 no. So, I mean, like, this is the thing. We, we, we want to establish that community. So who's going to look out? Yeah. Really, we need to look out for, our, I mean, like, that's, that's, the, that's the conundrum you find yourself in, right? Like, we don't like to use the label that, like, you know, separates us from the rest of the Muslims. Yeah. Right? That's the worst. We don't want that at all. Right? But at the same time, who's looking out? You're right. So we, we, we're stuck with that. So we're inclusive. Everything we do, we involve anybody. Anybody's welcome to come be a part of it. But... For those aspects, like like who's gonna speak the language, right? Like nobody here can give Dawa in Spanish uh, unless they speak Spanish. Yeah. You know, nobody can relate to the families, can relate to the food, can relate to the culture. So, yeah. we're like it, it's past time, you know. So, alhamdulillah, like I was seeing Latino Muslims of Chicago, uh, fifteen to twenty years ago, and, and those sisters, mashallah, we have. I'll drop some names. Like we have Sister Rebecca up north by ICCI. She's been doing these Muslims of Chicago. For like over 20 years, yeah, yeah, alhamdulillah. Yeah. And she, she, she started doing it in Spanish and then she realized like the need was greater. So she even does programs in English and they do classes bi-weekly in ICCI now. Then um, uh, not directly with us, but there's another sister, uh, Sister Celia in um, Bridgeview. Uh, they've been doing classes in Spanish, I believe, for over 25 years. Well, at the Mas Foundation area? Yeah. Or in Mas Foundation. It's, it's not, in okay. Mas Foundation, you know, and I have to say like, as far as I know, in at least in the United States, there's no class that even comes close to that. They're they're long, 25 years straight every week. Um, wow. From my understanding, you know, some some weeks it's three people, some weeks it's 30 people. But like to to, to stay consistent like that, that's incredible. Mm. Uh, so we have that, and we have like the sisters, uh, uh, Alma Campos and uh, Vilma. Vilma. Vilma was, uh, I'm remember, gonna, I remember uh, Sister Hazel would mention, was mentioning some yes. of these groups too, right? Yeah, Sister yeah. Hazel was so a part of She was on a podcast yeah. with us too. With Sister Hazel was a part of, of uh, Latino Muslims of Chicago yeah. before she headed out to Michigan. Yeah. And, uh, and Imam Wesley uh, LeBron yeah. was also part of Latino Muslims of Chicago before he went back to New Jersey. So, so oh. things kind of got dormant uh, yeah. for, for a while there, but, but then you had like a new wave. We had like, mashallah... 10, 20 young people, like I would say like late teens to early 20s, like all embraced Islam because like the last couple of years, like, I don't know if you noticed this in your Islamic centers, but uh, when I was the chairman of Dawah at, at MCC, uh, when our current president was campaigning to become president back in about, was 2016? Mm -hmm. We had, we had, we would have like three, four shahadas a week because something about, you know, the rhetoric that was going around at that time was oh, just sparking people. They were like, yeah. what is this religion? I want to yeah. hear about this. Yeah. I don't like this guy. And I want to <laughs> find out, you know, what it is that he's talking against. And I want to be, I want to be on the opposite side of what yeah, he's saying. Yeah, yeah. And, um, Allah brings people to Islam in many ways, man. Yeah. It, it, it can be to somebody who's intending hate through Islam. And that ends up being this overwhelming amount of people that are curious about Islam. Look at the numbers after 9-11. Yeah, all right. Look at the right. numbers that, that, that enter the fold of, the, of Islam yeah. after that. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Um, one thing, if we can switch gears, if you don't mind just a little bit, is you had uh, you mentioned that there's a, a lot of, obviously, social issues that are occurring, social and emotional issues, which ends up being the overwhelming amount of 
uh, of, of emphasis that any organization needs to give if they're working for the welfare of the people. Mm-hmm. A lot of it has to do with you know finding housing, but a lot of it has to do with sh- social and emotional issues, right? Even with like uh, scholars, you know, or imams of masjids, a majority of things that tie them down or a lot of energy that's spent is through social issues. So um, it's obvious that a lot of people are going to or do come to you and are going to in the future for social issues as far as domestic violence or, you know, struggling with faith or even people who may have uh, uh, major issues and they may be suicidal, whatever the case is. So is Ojala Foundation also Ohala? Ohala. Sorry. Ohala. Yeah, sorry. Ohala. The reason why I said it in Urdu. Ja- in Ojala, Urdu, you almost went to the, you know... The, ja- the root I word was. I keep looking at the spelling. The, I kind of have to trick myself to say. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you, Ojala in Urdu means something enlightened. Time. It means something bright. Ojala Mashallah. means brightness. Mashallah. Yeah, yeah. Which, so, we're, we're trilingual. Oh, I'm not gonna lie to you. The first time I heard Ojala, oh, Ohala, or I saw the spelling, I was like, wait, there's Hispanic brothers that are talking about something. It's my ignorance. But it's Hispanic brothers and sisters are talking about something light, you know, with the sun or something. Because, like, the background. But, anyways, <laughs> I just had to explain Be- myself. Before you my guys bed. came, me and Sheikh were joking around, and I was like, oh, oh, oh. No, he was being serious. He's like, oh, Hala, isn't that Hawaiian? I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> he, thought, he thought he was joking. I was like, what are you and, talking about? And Sheikh like, no, that's, that's aloha, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's awesome because the, to the river. <laughs> Yeah. To, to those who are coming into the fold of, of Islam, the Latino especially, yeah. we recognize, we've used this word prior to entering the fold of Islam with honor to Allah, with honor to God, Inshallah, as, yes. you know, we, under, the, under the, the umbrella that we thought. But uh, coming, entering the fold of Islam, and, and this word, ohala, now means that much more. So much more. It's beautiful. Uh, yeah, because mm, we Muslims now, and so now it's about Allah. And now it's a correctly guided idea of Allah God Allah. In, c- compared to the other. So when it, we it say, comes from Inshallah, right? It comes from the from the Arabia from Inshallah. Yeah. God willing. Yeah, and so and we say it before, without knowing the roots of it, we were Ohala is on a, on the Latino's tongue every day. Yeah. Yeah. Every day, just like it's on the tongue of the Muslim, inshallah, mm. every day. But you probably don't use it how but we, we didn't use, use it. We didn't use it. We didn't use it. With, that's what makes it so so strong. Yeah. That's what makes it so powerful for us. Because m- much like the uh, uh, Ramadan, Ramadan did not come about after. There was always Ramadan. Yeah. Right. There was always things before. The advent of Islam before the, the, the revelation of Allah Azza wa Jalla to the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There was already, that are still uh, uh, part of the deen of Islam, right? Well, only now it's uh, uh, for the right reason. So when we used to say, Ohala, back then, we, it, it was saying, God willing. Mm. But we didn't understand we God. Didn't because of, now, as Muslims, that word means so much more, so important. When I say, Ohala, it's like when I say inshallah. Allah you know? And the, the joke I was making was you don't use it like, you know, like Desis or Indians do or generally Muslims do. Inshallah means maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, yeah, that's, <laughs> a, I have a pet that's one of my pet peeves. Don't say inshallah if you know you're going to say you're not going to be there. Yeah. Are you going to be there tomorrow? Inshallah. <laughs> bro, just say no, bro. Uh, no, inshallah. <laughs> yeah. But coming back from eight point, I'm sorry I strayed a little bit, but as far as people coming with social and emotional issues, is, the there, is, there, is there a setup that you have maybe even professionals or uh, something so when somebody comes there, actually kind of being helped with a psychologist or somebody who has uh, a background in that field or something like that or again we 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 have our our uh our 1-800 number okay and so people call there we constantly get calls there and uh um our of course our social media outlets uh asking asking about it's one one of the things we, are, we get a lot of guys asking for wives subhanallah we are not a Marriage uh, or matrimonial matrim- hotline? No, we're not. That. As a matter of fact, we're more on teaching the sisters their rights. Subhanallah. You yeah. know, this is very what we're necessary. On. We oh, subhanallah. Uh, a lot of the sisters coming into the deen of Islam, Latinas, they th- not all, many of them think they need uh, an Arab husband 
for to solidify their dean to, to make their dean you know and then they get in, they get into it and they get in marriage with with one of the brothers and 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 it comes out it doesn't come out good and so and their rights have been uh the sisters rights have been right but because they thought that's what they needed in the first place mm. so we, we oh hello found this the, the the sister needs to get her from all of us we need to get our 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 calibre right we there's nobody is nobody's gonna solidify your dean except this between you and Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is what we teach the sisters and each other. And then later on, if you wanna get married with whoever, Alhamdulillah, it's gonna be for the right reason. But but you're gonna know about what your rights are. So you're gonna know what you what you got what's available to you, Alhamdulillah. And not to be blindsided or misguided by by uh, uh, what's the word uh the flowery discourses. Mm. Mm. Alhamdulillah. Beautiful. Flowery. Gotta get your corazon right. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. But, um, if if the rate if the level of the situation needs it, yeah, we, we refer people to Khalil Sand. We refer people to uh, Brother Edmund the Royal. No. Uh that you know, we 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 give you some advice but when it when it's more serious we know That's beautiful. Yeah. So yeah. you guys do the faith based counseling part. Absolutely. And then if it needs to be escalated you send it to the professionals. That's beautiful. I love reward you guys, man. It's very much needed because uh, a lot of people are afraid to get that help man you may, you mentioned a hotline that uh, usually no, people no. muslims can, or are they is that for latinos or is that for uh, no uh, for anyone could call the hotline i mean uh, we get just the microphone if you don't I'm sorry, i think i think we uh, we get more non latinos calling the number than more than latinos calling primarily like Reporters wanting to uh, do stories on us or or whatever situation is, but it's available for everybody. Anybody who calls, and if you if if you get an answer, because we work as well, you know we have know. regular jobs, and so uh, and then if you you don't get an answer, go to the, to the uh, to the message and you leave a message. And again, we have other uh, social media outlets that we get contacted by so many people from uh, all over the world. Subhanallah, yeah. Yeah. you know, all over the world, on the other side of the planet, they they, yeah. they messenger us, you know. So Alhamdulillah. Wow, so this is an all day thing for you guys, kind of. Even though you're working, you probably getting calls all the time during oh, that's work. No question, right? We, you guys we haven't, we, haven't, we haven't figured out how to stop it. You know? Subhanallah, <laughs> so, you know, yeah, we get calls all day. Wow. I've set, I've set up. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> I've tried to set up because we, especially during Ramadan, we've been doing a lot of. Uh, you know social social distancing so we got to do a lot of video stuff so i had to i had to set up a a, a studio in my house he you know with a little with our little band with our banner in the in the background yeah. because alhamdulillah this is a full time this is what well, the dean the dean is a uh this is fisa bil yeah this is not for me this is not for this brother it's not for the sisters this is not for the council members this is uh to, to to dawah this is to to spread dawah this is and and doing so is making us better alhamdulillah yeah, it does and but it's a when is islam islam is a 24-hour day thing yeah. from the moment you wake up you open your eyes in the morning yep. alhamdulillah make the make the wudu go make the fajr you're right yeah, until, until you go to bed alhamdulillah inshallah all day all day all day so just like the dean uh, uh, foundations and organizations that are that are on the team that are it's a 24 hour day thing yeah man. 24 hour day but it's, it's the uh, it's the reason why this is different and these type of organizations like Hala Foundation is different it's uh, it's really based on people just taking care of people right which no is question. very prophetic that's why it's an amazing thing man uh, when Sim told me that you guys were coming in and I started reading up a little more uh, about Hala Foundation and I was like, you know, and obviously people probably link you guys to Islam in Spanish too because Islam is Spanish, but mm -hmm. we had them on the podcast before too, but um, grassroots organizations like this that probably don't get uh, maybe lots of funding, they don't get lots of popularity, but you're in the trenches with people. Man. Yeah, That's what would why. make somebody do that? Yeah. They have to have a passion for you're it. You're right. You have to have, a, just like your brother said, you've got to have a passion for this, yeah. Yeah. you know, and for it to work. Yeah. For it to work, you have to have a passion. If you don't have a passion for what you do, it's not going to work. You're right. Just You're right. like the dean, you gotta have a passion for this dean. Yes, sir. You have, and and the remembrance of Allah. This is all dean. Yes, sir. This, this is when we go out and we feed the homeless. Dean, fi sabi Allah. This ain't to make us, but, and we feel for uh, and that's my pet pet project, if you will. Two of them is the the interactions with the miskin. You yeah. you have to feel for them yeah. to go out. At 
after working all day and go out and set up uh, uh, different people to bring food together to a place where we go and hand it out to places where people, other people don't want to go. Yeah. When you uh, talk about trenches, you want to talk about trenches. Yeah. Trenches is going to the, the brother last night, Friday, we went to uh, Tent City and uh, one of the, uh, the sheikh from uh, Masjid Mukminin on uh, mm -hmm. Roosevelt Neighbors. They, they came with us. Some of the brothers came with us. And when he saw the rats, oh my I talk about the rats was so big, it looked like chihuahuas. Right. This guy. Yeah. Uh, uh, they, they looked like chihuahuas. Probably, like, they were I talk big, about, right? They're like almost a foot tall, right? Uh, yeah. No, yeah. listen, bro. I promise you. The One day, I remember I saw the rat. I thought it was a dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to pet it. You know what I'm saying? And he, and he showed me his teeth. And I'm like, yo, I want no problem. You know what I mean? And it's huge. And then, and then it's not it's a color, It's not just one, two, three. I mean, no, it's over. You know, it's yeah. so Tent City. A giant Norway Tent City is a, is a city of homeless. It's a it's a, over there on uh, Taylor and this plains. And, you know, there's in the summertime, it's 110 uh, tents set up. And most tents house two and three people. You know, so do the math. So they bring food, right? So they have all food there. So what happens to the the, the 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 things that the food come in or the whatever's extra thing right there? So what happens? The rats come, and rats multiply. You already know, multiply mm -hmm. like rats, and oh, they are God. huge. And I'm, I'm I'm talking about head like 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 a Rottweiler, and then and <laughs> then they huge. got holes. I'm talking about huge. And they got holes in the ground that your your foot could go in. That's so you have right? to be. And then we're going at dark. We have never gone. Have we ever gone during the daytime? Uh, yeah, he made me go to the daytime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was during that that forty degrees below zero, oh, and my name know. came up. He bought the boots and he promised it to one of the brothers, but he had to do something that day. So he asked me to go. And Alhamdulillah, Masha Alhamdulillah, I was able Allah. to go. Soldiers. I walked away from soldiers. Okay, I walked away from the car from here to you. My phone turned off. That's oh, how cold it. I had a full yeah. charge. Remember with that 40 degrees? That yeah. Polar vortex. The yeah, the vortex. vortex, we went out there. We were out there. Come on. We, we were out there before all the cameras were out there because the cameras came out there. Oh, it's a vortex. And we got, a, you know, it's an opportunity, you know, for to take pictures. And they were going right after. We were there before the vortex, and we have still been there since the vortex is gone. And we, and inshallah, another vortex. I'm going to wear more, more clothing. But uh, yeah. alhamdulillah, we're going to be there for that too because we have a passion for this. Yeah. You know, this is this is a command from Allah, you know, to feed the miskin. Oh. This is a command from Allah. And for you to do so much hasana. So, so you, much you basically have people go out and give or do you have like a food pantry set up type too? We go. We go. So, we, we got we we have it's a it's a network. We have a network of believers. Alhamdulillah the brother was talking about uh the youth. We have some 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 and it's amazing when the youth uh, get involved in the deen when they become passionate at a young age in the deen alhamdulillah inshallah in their older age they will maintain this passion mm. you know but it's it's build up and so we have two groups one from the north side one from the south side we, we started out in my kitchen right we started out in my kitchen cooking sure sure alhamdulillah cooking a uh, uh, chicken I, and i say this i still have this was over two years ago and I still got some I, I got to clean up from my stove that I can't get out from the cooking Alhamdulillah. <laughs> but I'm saying it started in the kitchen with two three guys get out and yeah and then and, and, and we would go out we would make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches so and wrap them in in, surf, uh, in, the, in in the wrap do you make and Nutella sandwiches as well the what Nutella Nutella um, that's my favorite I'm sure we can I'm sure we can we yeah, have we, it. No, we but, need a little bit more fun no but the good thing Nutella's and banana chef no tell, but it's amazing tell him it's, it's amazing <laughs> no it's amazing because the, 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 before we started we started just like any organization it, it was very difficult the, 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 the funding very difficult still, still is so uh, feel free to donate uh, yeah but, but I'm saying peanut butter and jelly peanut butter and jelly we want to feed the miskin we want to feed them what we eat at home, you know what I'm saying? Rice and beans, some chicken, some steak. But at that time, we were not able to. You know, right. it's a large amount of people. We started out feeding a hundred and some people at first, remember? Allah. Yeah. Over, well, how, wait, how often? Every week. Every week? Every, every week. Friday. Do you guys have a designated? No, we started on Mondays because it was my day off. Remember? Yeah, yeah, Mondays yeah. was my day off. So we, 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 we were going, we went, we went almost a year and a half every Monday. Wait, how do you know they're all Muslims that you're feeding? 
No, we we, we so we <laughs> not, <laughs> we're yeah, not yeah. feeding. We're we, feeding we humanity. Feeding, the, feeding humans. Oh, we're feeding, we're feeding the, humanity. Yeah, we're feeding yeah. anybody who's hungry. So he's a troll. Is, don't worry about it. Look, no, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm no, joking, but no. this is a question that yeah, people okay. have. Yeah, no, it's a question. People that oh wait wait is this, this just for Muslims or you guys just looking after your own or you know is this for this is for everyone? Yeah. Yeah. So, so this actually, uh, we call this uh, brother Raul Nutella named sandwiches. it. The, the, this is called the Neighborly Deeds Initiative on mm -hmm. our part. And so, actually, there's a group in Houston that had been doing this for a short, maybe a year before us, uh, outreach in the barrio. Right. And they go feed the homeless in their city of Houston. Um, so we, they, they were like, yo, you, you know, Latino organizations, they communicate because there's so few, like, we're all cousins to each other, right? right. And, um, and they hit us up, and, and uh, Brother Alejandro Perez, and uh, Brother Raul here, they, they got the idea, like, yo, let's start doing something like this in Chicago. Um, Houston's different, though. Houston has all the people concentrated in one spot. Like, mm. Houston is, you know, they might be catching up to Chicago with population, but, you know, it's never going to be Chicago. You know, like, I, can, <laughs> yeah. I like the eggs rocking the they're, head. They're hoping to get... Timing? They're, they're yeah. trying to take the number three spot because... Their their population is increasing and Chicago's is declining. So uh, is it really? Texas. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, Texas, Chicago. Yeah. Crook, Crook County. Talking about Texas. Crook, Crook County. Crook County. Crook County. Crook County. Yeah, but um, so they're all going to like one spot. It's their work is you know, alhamdulillah, it's it's mashallah. What they're doing is amazing. But in Chicago, we don't have that type of a concentration. So Chicago, we ha we we go to like four, five, six different spots when we go out. Oh, because wow. you have pockets of homeless. And one person designated, or is it a mirror for each place? Or no, kind of we, we go in a caravan. Oh, is it we like go as a caravan. Deep. Yeah. Wow. Deep. Man, I'm the lie. And, and so, mashallah, like you said, we started out, we would have weeks where it was just two, three brothers. Yeah. And we would hit a couple of places in uh, Pilsen, which is a mm -hmm. primarily Hispanic uh, location, right? And like, they don't speak English. And a lot of them don't have papers. So they don't go to shelters because there's a fear of getting picked up. You know, and... Um, you know, a lot of people that are living on the streets, it, it, they're in the worst possible state that they've ever been in, right? So, mm. like, there might be some mental issues. There's a lot of self-medicating, right? So they don't want to go to a shelter. A they don't want to go to a shelter because the shelter is going to say no drinking, no this, no that. And if you're somebody that's dealing with a lot of mental issues, yeah, yeah. Uh, you want to kill the voices, you know? Yeah. Um, keeping it real, yeah, like, man. they do drugs so that they don't lose their mind. You know, at least they have, they feel they have some type of functional, mm -hmm. uh, you know, addiction, right? So when we hit the Latino neighborhoods, these are people that are like, they're roaming. They have their, their routines that they go through in the day, but they don't even have a designated, like, they don't have a tent city. So they literally uh, hit, they hit places at like 7 or 8 o'clock when business is closed. Right. Then some of the businesses have an understanding, like, they let them set up their tents and everything at night. And then by the time, you know, we start work in the morning, you got to be gone. So, mm. like... We have about four or five spots in Pilsen that we hit like that. And then we go to Chinatown. Um, and in some parts of Chinatown, like uh, Archer and Canal, they're set up full time. Are you guys are helping Asians as well? Um, we help everybody that's out. Yeah. Uh, but actually, very few Asians. Over the, yeah. the two years we've been doing it, very few Asians. You think there's only, hold on, you think there's only Chinese people in Chinatown, bro? <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> I haven't been Ignorant there. Ignorant suburban boy. <laughs> Look, yeah, I, go, I go to the city once a year. That's okay. true. Okay, okay. now listen, listen. You're excused. There, there's another thing I want to tell you. Look at him. Dead seriousness, right? A lot of people, and this is a little bit blunt, people might not like it. They don't like to deal with, you know, uh, people who are not just poor, but have mental issues and things like that. And when you're speaking about this, there's, and I don't want anyone to go out there and try to help you when they can't handle this. Right. You know, but they have, there's an obligation that should be stirring in our hearts while you're while you're talking about this because if I know I can't do it and I know Abdul Karim can do it, I I'm gonna make that. sure that Abdul Karim has these resources available to him that. that he can. So that obligation is lifted off my neck. Become you know? a facilitator if you don't got the grit. Basically. No, because and that's something like I'm so like I admire about you guys because I know I can't do uh, that kind of work. I, I've tried it. Before. Oh, I have a list. I'll tell you why he can't. I have a list, bro. I don't like illogical people. It's not like I don't like them as human beings. It's just like I can't work. I, I'm, I'm trying he, to. He's very OCD. He's very. That's why this podcast is so successful. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> because he has to have certain things in a certain way. If not that way, he starts spinning in circles. So I can imagine him going there and no. just coming back in five minutes. <laughs> bro, what what happened once was uh, there was a mental mental patient that I was trying to you know help walk through their issues with and. Uh, the the person you know, I walked through their entire life, almost over an hour and a half with them. You know, 
and then they went right back to square one. And that blew my mind because we solved the whole problem in an hour and a half, and I was so upset. That's why people need like help, like from professionals, medication, see, and see, the a lot of that. Is... You tried from the left, <laughs> but the other thing. Well, I'll mention the other things later yeah. towards the end. I'll, I'll leave a little suspense of why else he wouldn't. But no, is... I think he would. He just yeah, messing around. But you have to become facilitators. Someone like yourself would facilitate for somebody yeah. like themselves, because if you think that you're not up to it or that you have whatever, I don't want to say deficiencies. Uh, or maybe I will, but you have to have somebody else oh, so, do the job. So, sometimes some people have to, you know, realize like what they're good at, what they're not good at. Maybe they're good at, you know, uh, helping set up the Huala Foundation. Maybe they're building, maybe, maybe even just getting a, a construction contact, contract or, or some kind of putting two people in together to get uh, a job done. Just little things like that. People who are listening around Chicago, there's a lot of Chicago listeners. You guys have a lot of resources, a lot of wealth. You know all kinds of oh, different yeah. contacts to make things happen. Now, you guys are 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 in the process of setting up a building, or is that is that a transitional building? We're we're making an arrangement where we would have uh, a dedicated location. Yeah. Adjacent to the masjid. Oh, okay, beautiful. So kind of like, like an office. Yeah, uh, even bigger, maybe like a studio. Like a we, if you're familiar, if you're from Chicago, you know the reading room, mm -hmm. right? What Amir Ali and Mary Ali yeah. did. You know, may Allah have mercy upon them. Yeah. This is kind of what we're drawing off of, like that we would be able to set up a spot where people can come in and learn about Islam in the language they understand. And even, you know, I don't speak Spanish. I speak very little. I could order some food. You could probably <laughs> understand some, yeah. Yeah. So that we can. It, so it, but, beautiful. but I can talk to the brother, like a guy from the neighborhood. I can speak. I know the language of the people right. in the neighborhood, so I can talk to them. And, you know, I'm the, like the brothers who, who run the masjid, you know, they're coming from a background where like, they looked at they're looked at as others mm. they're not from the neighborhood they came to the neighborhood and they're not a part of the neighborhood that's that's how a lot of urban settings are set up right like you have a, a masjid where people come for friday prayer but the rest of the week it's like completely empty you know it's just the, the business owners in the area you know they they come there they pray and then Protocol, they go back yeah. to the burbs yeah but like we want to make a presence in the neighborhood. So, that so is there a message there already yes. that, okay, and is that run by Ohala Foundation also? It's not run by us, no. Okay. Uh, it, it's run by a, it's Chicago Islamic Center. I believe it's been there for over 20 years. It's on 63rd and Holman. But, you know, as transition happens, right? So the Arab that used to live along 63rd, now they've, you know, they've gradually moved to Bridgeview and okay. Oak Lawn and all Holy that. Park. So now this, you know, mashallah, beautiful message is there. But there's not really many people living there. Okay. So, like, they're like, take it, you know, go do whatever you can, give classes, you know, whatever. Like, we want to see the masjid full. We want to see things going on. And, I mean, we've had people come from as far away as, like, I mean, for us, you know, like Carpentersville and, and, wow. and all over the state. Like, they've, they've come to, like, events we're doing. And, like, alhamdulillah, they've, they've, you know, got the message from us. Like, they've heard about Islam for a period of time, but they went... You know, to maybe a masjid where they were kind of looked at funny because they got tattoos all over the place mm. or their, their face or, you know, maybe our, our, our the sisters are coming and they're not fully covered, you know, at that point. So, like, they're coming in casually, like everybody, that, you know, everyday yeah. people. So And then they get ostracized. So they don't feel welcome. Of course. So we're like, come as you are. Like, yeah. right? Like, there's a very famous uh, statement that's been getting tossed around. I think Zaid Shacker started it, right? Uh, that's a Nirvana come. song, come as you are. As you are. Come as yeah. you are and then, to then, Islam as it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Is all, okay. Oh, you're talking about the Talif thing. Is that? Yeah, Talif. Is that Talif? Yeah, or? come as you are. Oh, really? Yeah, Talif had that. Okay. Well, whoever said it, you know. Well, Zed Shaq is on the board. Zed Shaq is on the board. Right. Talif, it's a beautiful so maybe statement. Yo, it's a beautiful it is. Statement. Because I, I, and I, trust me, I thought about it for a minute. I was like, just, is there any better way to say it? And like, it's that it. You know, that's it. It's just like, yo, it doesn't matter what you are, yeah. what you're doing. Um, come. Yeah. Come and and come to this Islam yeah. and don't try to change this Islam like come to Islam as it is surrender yeah. you're, you're not right. gonna you're not gonna like Submission. add or subtract anything like this that's is beautiful it's yeah. pure a lot of people is. are afraid to say that man that's beautiful that you said that a lot of people are afraid to even say that because it sounds too authoritative or even though it's not that's Islam you have to tell people come into the fold of Islam but you're not gonna change Islam right, right. You're, not, you're gonna come into it as it is but because it. it's not mine it's not yours it's Allah's primarily, and Muhammad said he executed the orders. Right? Especially reverbs, reverts. When, when, when you gotta understand, these people have a preconceived notion of God through the their history, through the the religion they came from. They have a preconceived notion of the angels, 
they have a preconceived uh, of the of the prophets. Mm. Okay, so it is our duty as Muslims to 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 give them the guidance that the Quran speaks of Allah, that the Quran speaks of the Malaika, the angels, that the Quran speaks about the the Nabi, the, the Rasuls of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because they cannot fully embrace the deen of Islam until they cast off that which they they believed in that yeah. was contrary. Yeah. Because some of the things are the same in yeah, Islam, you're right. and that's okay to hold on to that as long as it agrees with the, with the Quran and the Sunnah of the yeah. Rasulullah. But these other notions of the of the of the Malaika going to war against Allah, stop for Allah. This cannot happen. You're right. It cannot happen. But this is a, especially with Latinos. Hmm. Latinos really believe uh, the war, the, the angelic war against God. So now they come into the Deen of Islam. But they still have that 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 idea. Yeah. And when they pray, or, the, or you know, they they still when they when they think of God, most people who come into the Dean of Islam through Catholicism, Christianity, who, who, God, the first thing they think about is Jesus, yeah. alayhi salam, who is a prophet of Allah in our religion, alhamdulillah. But they still, you know, yeah. they, they have that idea because yeah. it's been instilled in them, instilled in them, instilled in them all their lives. Yeah. So now. It's our duty. It's yeah, our you're duty. Right. I always it, wondered that, like, because when you we see a lot of Latin culture and a lot of uh, um, at least Mexican culture from whatever whatever I've read and seen in documentaries, is that uh, a lot of the stuff is related to Santeria and a lot of uh, yeah, well, Mary on. worship and and uh, you know making Mary into much more bigger than that. Yes, she, her status actually is. They have that preconceived idea, which is it, it contradicts the dean. Hmm. This all oh, this sharp. This is shirk, yeah. you know? And so they'll go, so if they go to a masjid and they do not have a, a, a one-on-one -on -one with the imam, they do not have, they don't know anybody. Mm -hmm. So many people, subhanAllah, I remember when I first uh, was going to the masjid in the world, um, I had a very, very, very negative, my first day in the, uh, my first day in the masjid, the and this first, was in Chicago? And uh, now. SubhanAllah. And, and I had a very, you know, uh, but, but where I came from, see, I, I embraced the Dean of Islam in the penitentiary. You know, I got most of my life, I was in the penitentiary. And Alhamdulillah, in his infinite so wisdom and his infinite mercy, allowed, he gave me Islam. Alhamdulillah. And so I'm used to uh, the, the brotherhood to be super united, super. I'm talking about nothing going to happen to none of the Muslims. You know, we look out for the Muslims. If a Muslim in this building is hungry, one of the guys, Joe, the brother don't got no money. We going on lockdown. We everybody let's we make a box. We say hook, hook up the box and make sure that brother gets you know everything he needs a TV a radio whatever he needs he's gonna have it in his cell. So I was expecting that type of camaraderie when I came home. Subhanallah. And I was just I, gonna ask you about that, but yeah. Go ahead. And, and 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 when I came to the masjid, I never forget. I was staying very far. I didn't have a car. Just fresh, fresh home. My first day. I had to wait for the PO my parole officer and once he left I'm gonna go to the masjid and make two rock house, right and because I couldn't make it I had to go straight to the home I was locked down until I see my PO so as soon as the PO left I hopped on a bike I was I don't know where it's at Grand and uh, I forget where it was at but it was far so I had to go on a bicycle to the train station and I got took the train to close to the masjid and rode my bike to the masjid so when I got to the masjid I don't know what to do with the bike. I know there's a way things are done. I know in Islam there is a way that things are done that we have to be, uh, of course, concerned with and, and, and respect. Right? We have to respect things. As long as they're in accordance to the thing, we want to fit into that. So I, I wasn't sure. So I, the Quran says, follow those who know, right? So I asked one of the brothers. I didn't know how intellectual he was in the deen or how, you know, was he... I didn't know anything about him. I see him walking in the masjid, and I said, "Excuse me, brother. What can what can I?" And he looked at me, and I said, "What can I do, do with the bike?" And he looked at me kind of real, you know, hard. I didn't know, I didn't understand. And I just came from this place, you know, so I'm not used to people looking at me hard like that. <laughs> so I grabbed a brother by the arm. I said, "Brother, if I what have I done to insult you, brother? Why? What's up? You know?" I, and then that was wrong of me, but I was, you know, I I, I went there for guidance. And then, alhamdulillah, when, when I said this to him, he recognized that. And he said, 
Astaghfirullah, forgive me, brother, you, you are right. Uh, I should have been more uh, uh, nice with you. I have been more, please put the bike here, brother. Come, let's go pray. You know, and then Alhamdulillah. But the, the very first time it was, you know, mm. and so what about, what about, I had known about the dean already, though. I had, and, and it still caused me to get a little, but, <laughs> but what about the one who doesn't know anything about the thing, who just entered the fold right. Islam, and he goes to the masjid, and he gets greeted with one of these faces, yeah. because he doesn't know the language, because he doesn't, no, the masjid is the place where, masjid, uh, sujud, the place to make uh, sujud, right? So you're gonna come with the gorilla face and you know the mean face to the people. <laughs> one of the one of the greatest lessons of 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 the hadith of Jibril is the way the community recognized this person who they never saw before. Yeah. They recognize this person. That's what we need to do in the masjid. We need to recognize the believer that we have not seen before and go and greet him. Go and say salam alaikum, brother. How you doing? Where you from? Let me get your number. Let's hook up. Let's go have tea. This is Islam. This is Islam, the building of a community. And that's what Ohala Foundation is. Ohala Foundation is the building of community, the return to humanity. When we go out there and feed the homeless, when other people don't feed the homeless, we don't give them the thing like, nah, we talk to them. How you doing, brother? We know it's a difficult situation. That's the second part, so how but, like but, giving food, but then also communicating. Oh, no, this the main, so that's, that's the, so, so the brother was uh, saying about it, the, the name of this initiative is Neighborly Deeds. And uh, it comes from uh, Surah, Surah Maun, okay, doing neighborly deeds, neighborly needs in, the, in the, the, the English translation, right? Neighborly deeds. But it's not, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not giving food. That's not our priority. That's what we do. But that's not why we do it. The objective is Tawheed. The objective is to mention Allah. The objective is to mention Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the final messenger of Islam. The message is to be human to a people who are not accepted so much as humans because of their condition. But, oh. but and alhamdulillah that Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't, doesn't look down upon us like that. You're less than human. No. Allah, if Allah made us humans, why would we treat a person without all the messengers of Allah? From Adam to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I just said this the other day. They they were they were chosen. They were they, they they were what's the word? They qualified for the for the for the for the office of prophethood before they became prophet. Remember he was Muhammad when he went up the building, he came down Muhammad the Prophet. So they qualified. Why? What was what made them qualify? Before the revelation came, before the law came to them, they qualified for the office of prophethood. Why? Because they were human at its best form. Yeah. They were the the highest state of humanity. Yeah. And that's what they taught the people. All from Adam al salam to the Rasulullah and, and, and as 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 we're part of the Ummah of the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so the Sunnah tells us to treat the miskin kindly draw them to Islam so the food is one aspect of that yeah. you know they hungry uh, and it's the needs uh, but, of the people you have to take care of their needs well Abdul right? Karim he said about their uh, their their mental state and their and their uh, medicating self medication it, it most of those most of the homeless are are medicated are on drugs and alcohol we've we've walked on them shooting up smoking crack drinking all type of stuff so uh, we're not gonna run away from that. We're not gonna. Mm -hmm. We're gonna give them the food anyway. Of course, inshallah, and tell them Allah, and we're gonna tell the neighbor. We're gonna tell the other person about Allah, and we spend time talking with these. But it's not just give them the food and keep moving. How you doing, brother? Yeah. You know, uh, we we Muslims, and we just want to let you know that that uh, Allah has not forgotten you. This is one of we must before every uh, neighborly deeds uh, outing, we have what's called a roll call roll call and it's not about counting who who's there it's about getting our objectives clear because sometimes at most every week there's somebody there's somebody new almost every time we go out there's someone new and in, in the group so we must give them you know let them know it's 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 a bad situation. we go to into dark dark places very dangerous places sometimes so we have to let them know hey listen uh, particularly to the sisters because we got a lot of sisters go 
stay together, grouped up, make sure there's brothers in front of you, brothers are behind you, you know, and, and so and, and for us too, there's a lot of things that's going on out there. Last last night, last night or oh, Friday, we went out. I remember at the end of Tent City, this one guy, this is a young lady that we know. She, we go there so much they know us by name. They know us by oh, they the Muslims. They the Muslims. Oh, they they, they, they give us salams. Yeah, they oh, salams. Yeah. Yeah. We get up like they don't speak no English, but in some spots they'll be like, Allah Akbar. Yeah. <laughs> so, the Muslims. so one guy, one guy was with a sister that knows us, the uh, itty bitty. Remember itty bitty? Mm -hmm. And the guy, he he was obviously under the influence. So I have a background of street. I understand street really, really well. I understand it really, really well. And I can see from body, uh, language and everything. This guy's uh, high and he's getting hostile. I can hear it in his voice. So in, in uh, instinctively, I want to, hey, what's up, bro? You know, but I have to, my concern is for the group. Of course. My concern is for the group. So I said, like, okay, have a good day, but God bless you. I'll keep you safe. Come on, brothers, let's keep moving. Sisters, let's keep moving. To take the, to take them out of uh, any uh, potential of course. volatile situation. Yeah, and even discomfort, especially yeah, with sisters but, there. But, yeah, but, yeah, so careful. Yeah, but Alhamdulillah, many people will not go mm -hmm. to these places because they fear these people, right? Alhamdulillah, let's give him a, me, me a passion for this, or Hala Foundation, a passion for this. We go, and we got a problem with going in there. Matter of fact, it was funny because the shit. He didn't want to go because he saw the rats. Right? <laughs> yeah, he said they because they were so big and we. They're big okay. rats, man. I'm talking so about. I, I once parked in the city and the the rat it snuggled up. It was one of those polar vortex days, and the rat went up my car, and uh. In so the tire? I, no, no, in into the, the engine block or something. It was it, so. Here's how I found yeah. out. I brought I brought my car back all the way to the suburbs, you know, and um. Uh, mm -hmm. A couple months later, or not even a month later, a few week, a few days or a week later, I found out that there's some awful smell that's coming out it's of the yeah. out of the out of the filter. So I went to the, the mechanic and they said there was a giant rodent in here. It must have died or something, but it's out of your car. But there's like a hole that burrowed all the way through your glove box. Do you know where the air filters are? No yeah. way. Uh, yeah, the oh my god. It was god. trying to stay warm. Yeah, yeah. it was trying to stay yeah. warm. Yeah. So be That's careful insane. where you park when you get in the city. Yeah. <laughs> I even saw them running around. I'm like, oh, it's so gross. Yeah, no, these, let me tell you, again, there's so much food. A lot of people uh, uh, go in with boxes of fruit yeah. and drop it off and leave, you know? Mm. But there's not no interaction. There's not no, uh, uh. what's your name, brother? How you doing? Uh, you want to talk? Is there anything you'd like to speak about? Get off your chest? How'd you get in this condition? Are you okay? Do you have family? Is there someone we can contact? You know, all these things. There's no, there yeah. has to be. You know what? You know what a lot of this is, though? I, sadly, it's not our generation that's more caring. Um, at least from my own my own experience. It's very anecdotal, okay? I've seen the people who do care enough to even drop that box of food off mm -hmm. are from, like, first-generation immigrant Muslims. Some people who may not necessarily, or may people who don't necessarily belong or know how to have a conversation with a different ethnicity mm -hmm. they come and drop they're like oh i'll just do this i don't i'm not comfortable with social interaction i'll, I'll take off and, and then this this other version this other layer of muslims like myself and sheikh Hamer and our age group who have completely kind of you know pulled away into suburbia and they'll say you know what i'll just take care of my mosque over here and yeah. i'm not going to worry about yeah, but Probably. even though they have a much more uh, higher ability to have a better conversation yeah, with right. people in the, in those type of communities, they'll just kind of kind of back off. Yeah. Like, eh. But that's why that's why Ohala Foundation yeah. I think is really important is because people want to do something, and now you have people you can go with. You say you guys go once a week still, right? Every yeah. Friday. So now, eight thirty. So anyone could come. Like if I have a sure, next door neighbor yeah. of mine that wants to do some work, he can come and just work with you guys. And, of course, and that's you know. The beautiful aspect of it is like like we talked about in the beginning, like we, we were two three brothers sometimes, you yeah. Know? And um, somewhere like a month or two before all of this coronavirus hit, yeah, we just Allah blessed us. We started having comp, com, competing masters, right? So we yes. started having a there's the these these math mass youth, mm. mashallah. The, there's a group up north and there's a group on the south side. Mm -hmm. They're like they fight with each other over who's gonna provide the food for us now. Oh, oh and, sure. and, and so I mean the beauty of that is like okay so, and they would come. They would come all and get get down and dirty with us too and give out the food. Mashallah. So like these are like you know teenage kids, early twenties, and right. the dedication to the dean that you see from them, it's amazing. Like it's 
some of them admittedly they were like we've never seen this type of no, lifestyle to, yeah. this is this is you know like if they do live in the city they live in a, a comfortable part yeah. of the city right so to come down to where we are at like it was really eye-opening to them and they they gave some testimonials and like they were tearful and everything it was it was wow. a big deal but so like you know all this this strife that's been going on in chicago all these uh not the protest right but like the the looting that yeah. took place and then some of the racial stuff they kicked off after that so like we wanted to really show up because like you know who's going to speak for the latino muslims who's going to speak for the latinos who's going to help bridge of these course. gaps right so you know one of the master the master of Mominin, as a matter of fact on the west side of chicago they reached out to us immediately they're like we got to do something together we got to show the people that like we're united the Muslims are united, you know, the Latinos and African Americans and so on and so forth. Like, we got to have the people together to show them this is what Islam really is. And all that racial stuff that's kicking off, we got to put an end to that. So we're like, okay, we do we do our project, Neighborly Deeds, on Friday. Let's show let's, let's show some unity. Let's we're, let's come together and do that. So not only do we have, like, Meshara Mu'minin, which is a predominantly African American community, they came out with us to do that. But then you have, like, you know, these uh, suburban uh you know out of kids right so they're the ones kicking in the food so like you see the beauty of islam right there wow that's like, awesome like, you have all these different groups coming together to show like that's what i this love is, about matthew matthew mass youth is such a um the underrated organization and i think it's it's someone uh, an organization that a lot of our people around our age were who were having kids were entering into grade school and high school you know to send more kids into because they're they're able to come out to these type of uh, settings and be able to contribute some. Yeah, something. no, but one they thing you mentioned really, yeah. really, I think is really important is, like, if you want to go to the streets like where there's poverty and there's it's a rough neighborhood, you have to take people that already know the streets. Like he said, he knows street. Like that's what people sometimes I think are looking for. They don't know where to go and they're kind of afraid and they need the tutelage of somebody like yourselves. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That know the street very well and then they feel more confident. That's when they get into the sadaqah that you guys are a part of, right? Um, it's very important. Very yeah. important to give them, to, to ease their concerns. Yeah. It's very important to ease their concerns because everybody has concerns. You know, you're going into a into a drug-infested, uh, possible uh, condition. It's very bad. It's very bad for them. But we need to yeah. see that, too. We but, have to be but, able to see that side, too. Uh, you that's know that's what? real life now, man. SubhanAllah, the blessing, alhamdulillah, is fi sabilullah, uh, for the cause of Allah, that's why we go out there. But alhamdulillah, mm -hmm. there has not been a time in two years that we've been doing this every every time we go out that every one of us have not been made better by having had that experience. Mm. Because at the end of the night, especially them cold, cold nights, polar vortex nights, <laughs> we going home to a warm bed. Yeah, we got a refrigerator. We could eat. Heck, we could drive, turn the heat on in the car. You're right. And 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 drink some coffee on the way home, yeah. or stop in a restaurant and go home. These people can't do You're that. Right. That's their home. That street is their home. They don't have a place where they can. Well, now they do. Alhamdulillah, the 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 city because of uh, of the COVID COVID nineteen, they've set up uh, sanitizing stations. Okay. At, at uh, the porta parties too. At the what? The porta parties. Big. Too. Party party now and with showers they they have showers and showers so they they alhamdulillah I wish it could have happened first but alhamdulillah it's kader it's kader is have is now because they've needed this for a long time subhanallah people always want to look for 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 uh, answers after the question has been asked let's let's look for answers before the question is mm. I, you know <laughs> they needed these these sanitizers before COVID-19 yeah. maybe to slow this the pace down but alhamdulillah they're there now people are scared to go to these places again what you were saying earlier and alhamdulillah it's not for everybody for the Muslim all the Muslims want to do good deeds. I don't know no Muslims that don't want to do no good deeds. this is a part of our deen so they can't come out everybody can't come out but they can they can donate they can purchase the, the the food that we're gonna give to the homeless. They can send money to uh, to our organization directly, and we can do it because we. It's not just about food, Subhanallah. Nah, no. it's about we get them tents, sleeping bags, clothing, uh, underclothes, 
uh, um, uh, food, of course. Hygiene kits. Hygiene kits. The what are the things? The heaters. The the, the propane. Heat, propane uh, heaters. You know, them things cost eighty bucks. I think we paid for one last year. For, for, yeah, but this is alhamdulillah. This went to to it came through donations. Yeah, and it went right to the people. That's why we. So that some people have a issue about. Why are you videotaping your good deeds, brother? You're losing your good deeds, brother. You, no, no, they really do. And I've heard this I on, know, on a I know regular. The type. You guys know. You we guys know the type. Yeah. yeah. So we want to get the word out. We want to get the. Yeah, we want people to see this because you, you know why uh, this whole uh, uh, protest thing jumping off is so so big now because people are seeing it now, right? Just like the civil rights movement when the, when the, when the when the white folks sat in their living room. To eat their dinner on their news on the TV, there was black folks getting attacked by dogs and the police. Now it came a it became a concern to them, right? So the same way, we will videotape or or put posts out, not to bring glory to ourselves. It's not for all glory belongs to Allah Azza wa Jalla. And and it's fee sabilullah that we put this out so that we can get funding, so that we can get donations brought back into the because we have jobs, we have family that we have to take care. We have bills that we have to take care. We can't do this. I'm, none of us are rich. None of us are rich. Hmm. You know. And so the time, just the time alone that we spent, like you said earlier, this this is a twenty, this is a seven day a week thing. Yeah. This is not a one. This is not a Friday thing. Even you know, while you're at work, even you're even with your work, you're yeah, I got my man. I call him. Oh, subhanallah! So <laughs> you know, don't forget to do oh, this. Oh, that Abdul Karim again. <laughs> no, but that's I love him. Okay, and I'm, I'm glad. You know, that's part of the 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 beauty of it of Ohala Foundation. I met this brother years before. Yeah, I was just about to ask that story. What's the origin story between you two? Man? I, I met this brother years ago, years before, uh, with another brother. He's he's he's. Uh, He's he's dead now. The brother's dead now. He got murdered. We went into his uh, into his bookstore, and we met. And uh, you know, I was uh, you know I was in the dean. I was Muslim, but I didn't have a strong foundation, and I didn't. I I think I've been to the masjid in the world. I don't know. Oh, at that time, I'd never been to. I've been to the masjid twice in the world. I've never been to the masjid. You have time. to pardon my ignorance. I apologize. When you say in the world, what do you mean by that? Okay, so <laughs> my bad, dude. <laughs> so I like I said, I I, uh, I entered the fold of Islam in the penitentiary. I was okay, and you know, in this prison. Is the world. The, oh, so that's 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 when we talk about dunya, that's dunya, you know. Even in there too. But I'm just saying, like when we say we we in prison, we say, oh, you're going to jail if you do that. That's segregation. So there's a <clears throat> there's a way we talk. Uh, there's a way we talk. So uh, I'd only been to the masjid maybe twice in the world when uh, when I met this brother in in the bookstore. And uh, years later, I was in uh, I I went to prison and uh, I did a, a decade. And uh, uh, I went to Alhamdulillah. When I came home, I uh, uh, some brother I was I didn't have a phone. And I, I, you know, I didn't have a phone. And my sister was coming to pick me up at the train station downtown, but I'm not downtown, I'm someplace else. So I'm looking for a phone, no phones. So I went into it, and it was not being uh, uh, joyful, but I went to a 7 Eleven, and there was a, a Arab brother in the, in the 7 Eleven. Darn, I wish he was Indian. Yeah. And, and, and he, asked, he asked me, he asked me, uh, no, I asked him, do they have a phone? Is there a phone around them? Here he says, how long are you, you going to talk? I said, I promise you, but I won't be talking more than two, three minutes, please. So he, he overheard my conversation, and uh, I said, Inshallah, and Alhamdulillah. And my sister's not Muslim, but it's been instilling to me so to speak this, wow. this way. So he heard, and uh, he said, you Muslim? I said, yes, Alhamdulillah. He said, brother, take anything you want. Yeah, take Allah. anything you want, Alhamdulillah. Take anything you want. And I said, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm shy to take anything I want, yeah. because this is his business. But I was really, really hungry, you know what I mean? Right. So I did take a cheeseburger oh, yeah, and, yeah. and a pop, you know what I'm saying, yes, and a bag uh, of chips. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. And also his uh, information about his the masjid that he attends, which was Mosque Foundation. Hmm. So I went there in the, in the winter, I remember, I was upon a lot. It was so difficult to get there on buses and trains from, from, because I'm in a halfway house. I just came home from prison. I'm in, I'm in uh, Calumet City. 
but I got wow. a journey. Uh, you know, I want to know about this place. So I, I, I went there and I thought I was going the wrong way. And I remember I got off the bus on the wrong bus stop. I had to walk about two miles in the snow. And I was going to stop. But my training kicked in. The training kicked in and said this. The, the harder it gets, it's the closer to the, to the, to the, uh, to the, to the ease. You just got to get through the difficulty. So I, I, I got the, the, the difficulty part down pat. I'm just trying to get to the Yusra. But I was getting ready to quit. Beautiful input. I was yeah, getting, I was getting ready to quit. And I thought about this ayat. And uh, Alhamdulillah, I, I pursued it. And I went to the to the masjid and i'm just saying that you know you, you you meet people that can make an effect in your life and we have chances we have opportunities to make an effect make a change in somebody's life for the better not for them to say thank you or to give you some money or something just for the cause of allah so many opportunities for for dawah that allah gives us we just gotta be on point. Yeah, man. So how how many years down the road did this did the connection with him happen? Wait, wait. <laughs> I, uh, that's what I'm saying. Ten years later, say, well, I came home. Uh, uh, I went to, oh, so you I were saying the, ten years after you got back? No, 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 no. Ten years after I met him. Oh. Ten years after I met him, uh, I was at the Mosque Foundation for Tarawi, and and Alejandro was there first. Were you there that way? Alejandro was there that one. Alejandro and and uh, uh, Islam and Spanish was there, and so I seen Latinos, and I said that's what I'm talking about, mm. you know. So I hurry up and got to the to to talk to the brothers. So I met with Alejandro uh, Perez, Alejandro Perez, and uh, Facebook. You know, I, I never I don't know nothing about no Facebook. Ain't no ain't no Facebook in the joint, and so but so I got <laughs> on Facebook. Huh? Not then. Oh yeah, it is now, but it's, legal. it's it's illegal though. It's still bogus. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, so so uh, got on Facebook. Alejandro was, became a friend of mine on Facebook, and they were friends. And I kept seeing his post about we had a we had a class uh, uh, the seal nectar. Mm. We had a class on the the seal nectar, and uh, I love it. I had that. I had I, that was one of my favorite books. On the Sira in the penitentiary, so oh, I gotta go to this. Is Latinos too? And then when I went, we, what was the masjid? Forty nine. It was on four, forty seven. Like forty eight in Ashland. Forty eight in Ashland. 48th Ashland. <clears throat> and we showed up, and I don't know none of these guys. Don't. I, well, I know him, but I didn't know I know him. And Alejandro, I, I met him. You know, like we say, I met him over a cup of coffee. Mm. You know, I don't know these cats, but it's the Dean of Islam, and the way I uh, was brought into the Dean of Islam. Is the Muslim is gonna give you some? You're gonna know. You're gonna know the difference immediately with the Muslims because you're gonna see the, the the radiance in their in their smile and their eyes, and they're gonna be alhamdulillah. And they're gonna treat you like you're somebody special. The Muslims do that with 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 other Muslims. They treat you like they. You, you, but a lot of Latinos don't don't get that because they don't get that far into the into the masjid. So we started. I showed up at the class. And he's he's teaching the class. Allah Akbar! Wow. And, yeah, and uh, we're 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 talking, we're discussing, and he the brother says, "Aki, how did how did it come out, Aki?" I mean, this is where you from? <laughs> oh right, right, right. Where you from? Huh? What part? They don't let us. Right, they don't let us. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, and then then West Humble Park. Yeah, and then so oh, so, so now <laughs> now that's my brother. Now I got. But but but. We we start talking to each other. We start remembering. We, we know. Okay, we know what neighborhoods we're from. We know, you know, our history. We got a similar bit. background. Yeah, we got the same. Besides background. the prison part, yeah, yeah, but yeah, but but what what you he had left out right was when I met him ten years prior to this, I gave him a Hispanic Muslim. Oh, mashallah. And, oh, and, yeah. and now I'll tell this part though, because this I part st I still have it. I, I, I have it. I still have it in my car. Fortress of the Believers. Goes, oh, okay. Fortress okay. of the Muslims. He, he has like, it with him. Muslim? He yeah. has it with him that night we meet. After no yes. way. That's what yeah. it is. Allahu Akbar. Yeah. What a beautiful story. He gave it to me. Well, actually, <clears throat> actually, because uh, we went in the bookstore and, you know, and you, you, would you like something, brother? And I, you know, yeah, I want the, the Sahih Bukhari set. You know? <laughs> it's very expensive. It's very, <laughs> that's what you talk about. You talk about, you know. Nah. But he says, I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you something that you can use every day. 
He's right. right. For the rest of your life. For, right. for the rest of your life. <laughs> and he gave me the book. Oh, and mashallah, during Ramadan, and, and I have to get at least two, I'm going to get at least two a week, inshallah. Mm -hmm. And we've been uh, doing uh, uh, about the duas, all the duas in, in the fortress of the Muslim. We've been making videos about them in Spanish. Hmm. In Spanish, in the Arabia, in, in, in Arabic, in Spanish. Wow. For our community, you know. Based it, off the same book. Of course. Allah no, based on the wow. book. Yeah. Had, Full circle, man. The first time I met him, I, I know him from nothing. You know, like, I, but I gave him a Hussein Muslim. Mm -hmm. Then we meet 10 years later, we sniff, you know, Chicago dudes. We're sniffing each other out. Where are you from? What, what you? He's like, hey, wait a minute, man. Yeah. Did you used to work at this store? Yeah. I know you. And then the master we were in was a, had a big stairway. We were on the second floor. He runs down to his car. He comes back up with the. Oh, oh yeah, man. He made a grown man cry, bro. Yo. Yo. I said, you remember this, bro? Man, yeah. subhanAllah. That's amazing. Wow. And the brother, the brother, subhanAllah, the other brother that was with us, his name is Tariq. Uh, you know, he was. Uh, uh, before the dean, he was involved heavily with the, with the gangs and everything. And uh, he was very, very, very uh, well respected and feared in the prison. And he, I met him. I met him in the prison, and uh, he, he ended up becoming the muezzin and then, and then uh, uh, assistant imam and then a residential imam in the joint. And I made him the the librarian, because as we were speaking earlier, the information that we gi give access to other Muslims, if it's wrong. Mm. Um, on, on the day of judgment, that's going to be on you. And I really fear Allah Azza wa Jalla, and I fear that day. I got enough problems. I got enough problems. I don't need no more. So I put somebody who's going to be respected because the library, people in the prison system, imagine it's a Muslim library. But not everybody there is there for deen. Mm. A lot of people are there because there's limited uh, movement in the prison, of course. So the gangs can't meet up together and and there's different housings so this house won't be grouped up with this house for nothing you know they segregate them keep them away from each other so juma service is a place where money the gangs can come together to 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 do their thing have their gang meetings because there's no other way to do it i can i as a muslim i'm not the, the super Muslim. I'm, 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 I consider myself the lowest of Allah's servants, like, like the, the ant that, that said, let us get out the way before uh, Suleiman's uh, forces Subhanallah. trample us, Subhanallah. you know, and the ant taught the, the, the Prophet of Allah a lesson in humility, Allah. alhamdulillah, and so this is how I can, but that library can't have stuff in there that opposes Tawheed, of course, so they had a bunch of Nation of Islam things in there. They had a bunch of uh, uh, what's that one? Angels, uh, angels and demons. Uh, angels and demons, gods and God. I forget. Yeah, it's yeah. a group like 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 uh, uh, the the Hebrew Israelites. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, There's and like a five percenters. Yeah, and these a bunch of groups. So they had all this information in there. And when I first arrived at that prison, it was not. Mm, I can talk about it. Hey, bro, that can't be. But one of the the imam, he was, uh, he came from a, a more science background, and so he allowed that to come in. I I was not raised by that. I was I came in the dean, the brother who who uh, introduced me to the dean, uh, uh, Red. He come from my background, but this brother straight uh, dean, straight <laughs> dean. Yeah, I love it. Alhamdulillah. And Allah. so, so when I was when I was in in the in the streets in the mob, I understand order and discipline. I was raised on that. You cannot survive without order and discipline. This brother showed me Islam, and I, I ain't been right since. Well, actually, I've been right since. Alhamdulillah, because <laughs> but no, the, the brother had a had a beard like this, and he had to, and he we spoke in passing. I, I just got a year. I was sent to segregation for a year for something I did in another institution. So Pontiac is a triple max. It's the highest max in maximum security prison in Illinois. Lockdown, that's it. And he was my neighbor. And we know each other from the Jahalia days. You know, and so when he, uh, when, uh, when I passed, he saw me and he, and he mentioned my, he, hey, brother, and I looked at him and I'm, I was, no, nah, I wasn't in the dean yet. So there's a, there's a, 
a, a, a way of conducting yourself, you know? Then you, what you calling me for, bro? Who is you, dude? You know? <laughs> Joe, I will crack your dome, dude, you know? <laughs> and he said, no, nah, brother, it's me. And he pulled his beard back. Said, oh, wow. And I said, what you doing in there, bro? <laughs> you know? And, 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 and um, I said, what's all this about? He said, I'm Muslim. I said, Muslim? Come on, man! Because I was I wasn't raised in a dean. Yeah. I was far, far from the dean. I went to I went to, in one of my momentary street, uh, about a year and three months. I was in the street. Since I was twelve years old, I've been in an institution or on parole. I've never been free from from parole ever. I've never been totally free from the system since I've been twelve years old. And uh, and one time when I was on the street, I actually went to uh, got involved deep into the church. And went to Bible college to be a minister, you know, and yeah, and so Alhamdulillah, and the pastor he paid for for me for my uh, education. The streets called me back, you know, the streets. It was my color to 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 be Muslim, Alhamdulillah. But I got that knowledge, you know, and uh, um, what I was saying, uh, the, the 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 I I learned all of these things about Christianity when I was you know in school, and so. I'm able to bring that knowledge. We uh, we we meet people that's not Muslims. Most people that we interact with are not Muslims. They're Christians, but they gotta come from a Christian perspective. Yeah, but hold on, the Bible says this, <laughs> and a lot of Muslims, a lot of Muslims don't know how to respond to that. The brother read. He didn't come to me from Quran. He came to me from a place that I knew. The brother who you knew from before you held the spirit down. He came to me from the Bible. Uh, he brought Islam wisdom. to me. Mm. Mashallah. That's yeah. Dawah. That's Dawah. You gotta you gotta come to the people in a way that the people understand. Yeah. Because if you can do all say the all uh, uh, fancy words or talk all the slick stuff in the world. But if the people don't understand you, how is that Dawah? Right. You understand it. That don't make it Dawah because you understand it. It make it Dawah, it's a call. Dawah is a call, right? Uh, the Imam said. Uh, it's an invitation to think. That's what dawah is. An invitation to think. So if you have not made that person think, it's not dawah. And that's how the brother came to me. He came to me from the Bible. Now I know the Bible. So I'm like, no, but it don't mean to hold on. That's what you were taught. Read it. Read it and think on it. And then he, then he, he, then he introduced me to little tidbits of, of Quran, actually Sirah, Sirah of the Rasulullah. So when, when he was basically, he was next to your cell. He was basically. Ah, uh, he was three cells down. Wow. And then, so when you first get get in Pania, you have to do ninety days behind the wall. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, protection from the police officers. They don't get stuff thrown on them. So he was at the end of those 90 days wow. and, I, and I just walked in so in 90 days he wow. was gone he had to go to a federal prison after that and I stayed in there and moved around in the building because I had to do a year but yeah subhanallah. alhamdulillah subhanallah lots of experience man Allah Akbar. alhamdulillah alhamdulillah so yeah. as, we, as we wrap up the show um, what are the top three major issues that Ohala Foundation has right Right off the bat, as you were speaking, you know, you were talking about um, getting camera set up. And I was like thinking, you know what, hey, if uh, brother needs help with cameras, I know some uh, some uh, some way I can help him with this, you know. Maybe I can't go out on the streets with so him. So you mean the three top but, challenges that well, they're having Well, yeah, right yeah. What are, what are some challenges? Maybe some something can, can resonate with our listeners who, who may be able to help you guys, even if it's not financially, but in some other capacity. Um, Even though finances are Finance is the number one very thing. Important. We're, we're going to put this information in the description below. Make sure you guys check that all that information out. But what are some things that they can help? Three things out? that you think that you nef definitely need help that someone listening or even ourselves, we can see what we can do to help, inshallah. Well, Manpower uh, or whatever the case is. Myself and Brother Raul, you know, we, we come from, you know, the neighborhood. So this, we, we're kind of street guys, if I I can't think of a better way to put it right. That we know the neighborhood, we're from the hood. Of course. So for us to deal with Dawa and giving that to the people and talking to them in a language they know, understanding what it's like to have non-Muslim family members, to be able to have events where we can bring our non-Muslim family members together and they see us 
uh, having food that they're familiar with in a language they understand. Alhamdulillah. For, for us to do that, uh, we got that covered. Alhamdulillah. Like, that's not difficult for us. But uh, the technical side and the websites and, 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 and all the video recording and all that, like, we need assistance on that. Yeah, well, I mean, we have some volunteers, but like, Alhamdulillah, and, and everyone that's helped us in the past, you know, mail out or you. But it, the fees of Ilala, uh efforts that we get a lot, uh, we could use more than that in okay. the future. So, so, so audiovisual type stuff. Audio number visual, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody that could actually go um, and and record some of the stuff that not just us, but like many. We have other classes going on and everything, but an inability to get the message out to people. So you want to be recording the classes that you guys are conducting too? Oh yeah. Seamlessly. Oh yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. That, that's Absolutely. I mean that's the number one thing because there's there's the ability to give dawah in the language people understand and in the language that you know in Spanish particular, right? So in order to to get that message to the people, you know, we, we, we can give the class, but as far as like broadcasting, you know, I mean, like millions of people are in need of this message, you know, and, and if I could say too, like, there's so many organizations across the country now, 20 years ago, there was none that I knew of. Uh, when I was coming into Islam and I wanted to get Dao material or anything in Spanish, I literally went to Mexico City. What? Yeah, and there, there's a brother down there who, who I went twice, uh, Omar Weston. Uh, down in the capital of Mexico City and like they they had a dawah center there and I got material from him but it, 20 something years ago there was nothing and we helped them uh, alhamdulillah I worked with an organization and they they helped them to establish what was going to be the first masjid in Mashallah. Mexico but since that time now alhamdulillah you have in 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 uh, east coast there is a uh, latino muslims of new york there is uh hablamos islam which is a, a family that's uh, close to me that they've been producing material all these years there is uh, islam and spanish in houston and in dallas and we everybody knows the great work that they're doing and the, uh, there's groups in los angeles uh there's there's a lot of people i, I want to make sure that they get their name out there too because of course cause my whole thing is those localities take care of localities right Mashallah. so in chicago um it's important that if somebody wants to know about Islam, they can reach out to Ohala Foundation, and we can pro we can be that person that, that talks to them, gives them the material, teaches them how to make wudu, teaches them how to yeah. pray, teaches them the basics of Islam. And and groundwork because man. it's not there. It's not there. You know, yeah. it was just yesterday, a, a group of sisters came to us. They're like, we've never heard of you. We've been we've been here, in our homes, watching YouTube videos, trying to learn Islam. No. And and. English isn't their first language, so they're struggling. They're struggling trying to learn Islam from an English background, mm -hmm. and they don't know how to make wudu. They don't know how to pray. Where where are they gonna get it from? You know, and not everybody's tech savvy too. You're so right. if you got somebody at a, a certain age, you know, like people, the youngsters aren't on Facebook, and and the elders aren't on Facebook. So mm. you, 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 how are you gonna reach them? So we're finding all these different. We need to find all these different avenues of how to get the message out there to them. So the first one is like audiovisual stuff. What else would you say after that? Say, uh, another challenge that you need to tackle to make everything more seamless do you guys fluid. need boots on the ground yeah. uh, people who are we, latino speaking or i'm sorry uh spanish, spanish speaking that's, that's always that's always you know that's a yeah, problem that's, with mine we, i don't know how to talk we, i don't know and i'm on the podcast speaking, you know? <laughs> we actually uh especially for the you know we need dawa material yeah. we have we have but we always need dawa material this now because we give it out yeah so so we always need dawa material you need coming a storage out. of more we need we reserve need, we need we need dawa material we need Qurans in Spanish you know we need uh, all these like uh, uh, and that's a shout out to uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Farouk, Farouk Post he is he Alhamdulillah may Allah reward him and and the work that he's doing Farouk Post P-O-S-T Farouk mm -hmm. Post yeah he's a, he's a he's a Sheikh of Hadith American He's an American Sheikh of Hadith. So, Where did he go to school, Akhi? Um, I'm just got his PhD. Where is he in, in the city? He's in, uh, no, he's out east. He's, he's out east, east but we're, yeah. like, we're, we're very east. close. We're very Beautiful. close. Beautiful. And so he sends us, uh, he sends us dawah material, alhamdulillah. What about, I hope you don't want me asking this, but like, what about like game piece? Do they have anything in Spanish? We 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 doing them. yeah we doing their their uh, translation beautiful we're translating oh nice we're working on their translation. wow and, and yeah uh, stuff for that Doctor Sabil has, has been so behind us from the beginning alhamdulillah yeah. game piece and mashallah like you know I, I've witnessed firsthand you know they're a purely volunteer organization and and they inspired us because wow. like I, I've yeah. seen their meetings and it's just brothers talking about they were on the phone with somebody for three hours 
Yo, in the middle of the night, two two o'clock in the morning, doing uh-huh, dawah yeah. on the phone with their with their phone number. It's just for it's people amazing. who are international listeners, you have definitely seen gain pieces, billboards, and things like that on memes or things that have been circulated over social media. Something about you know Muslims. You know, it's always like some something funny or something that dispels um, some stereotype about Muslims or whatever. And there's always going to be these beautiful billboards that Gain Peace sets up. So those that's Gain Peace who's usually setting those up. But wow. yeah, yeah. Uh, and we need we need uh, we need uh, you know we go out to the to the homeless people, right? And and they don't have this some guy. I I took a picture yesterday. This guy is sleeping on a a cardboard. A cardboard with a, what do you call those thick oh, blankets for the winter? Um, like a sleeping bag? A, a, a big old thick blanket he's yeah. laying outside. That's what he's sleeping on. Now, if you go to, say, Tent City or any of these places, there's rats everywhere, right? We talked about that. So imagine the guy sleeping. Just, uh, the rats going to walk all over him. Guarantee they don't care if you're a human being. They're rats. That's and they bite. They, they bite you too, yeah, right? If you're sleeping and stuff, right? If there's, yeah, there's something bite. that's uh, tasty. Like, yeah, like you put butter in your, or sorry, not butter, but oil in your hair. Sometimes they'll come and start. And so, your hair. and so, really? we yeah. imagine if you put butter in your hair too. Yeah, <laughs> right. So we, sorry. so we, <laughs> do have, butter. yeah. If you put butter in your hair too, <laughs> don't put butter in your hair. If in, in Indians the put uh, olive oil in their hair. <laughs> we, uh-huh. we, they need tents. They need sleeping bags. They need uh, socks, uh, socks, hygiene drawers, kits. hygiene kits, uh, mm, hats. Gloves for the winter, scarves, coats, uh, boots. These are all things that Ohala Foundation, to the first and foremost, the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jalla, that 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 the risk was there, the provisions was there. But it's it's the it's the people who listen to the podcast. It's the people who are seeing the the videos on on uh, on YouTube and Facebook, other things that we do. They send in donations, right? Because we we don't have it. We have the desire. We have the understanding, we have the, the ability hmm. to do these things. The things that we don't have, right? we have a, a, some, but we're always going to be in need of, is the resources to, cool. to, to, to do this. So just to summarize, it's AV, you need uh, some material in Spanish preferably, right? No. And the other would be like care packages and, and stuff for people. And uh, th- What about like clothes drives? I know we're running yeah. out of time, but what about, have you guys done like clothes, clothes drives? drives? No. No, no, that's not, fine. Not I know. Fruitful for us. Yeah, yeah, I know. It, it can be very. We did for we did for the clo- for the for the blankets. It can be very chaotic. Yeah, yeah. blankets, new blankets, cool clothes. Yeah. The because yeah. a lot of you know comes from people might have you know. Not that people issues. end up giving you. Yeah. There's issues that with the clothing. Maybe you know you bring them to the house. Maybe you got some bugs on it or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was storage. talking to Shirazi too about Islamic oasis. He said yeah. a lot of people. It's like half of their clothes sometimes they have to throw away because people bring them. They got like oil Trash. stains on them, yeah. ripped up, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah. We so gotta, we need. So we need. We need. Ohala Foundation needs things not for ourselves, for the people that we service. Equal to the things that you yourself want at home. You want a clean blanket when you sleep. No. That's all the clean. And you know what it is? That's dawa. When you they get a, a a blanket that's they they the things that they get they expect to be tore and messed up. They expect it because that's the lifestyle. Yeah. You know. I'll say some rather than than what we want people to to give to us like this top three. We we want people that are looking for something. To know that there is something, right? Yeah. Like if you're coming from a background where maybe like you're in and out of the dean, you're you you have got a gang banging background, or you've been a thing, and I'm not just saying like that's what we're all about, right? Yeah. Like, alhamdulillah, we're the grunts, right? But <laughs> but like we have you know doctors and, and high level educated A2C. people with us, Mashallah right? We just we're the ground workers, but but like if you're coming from that background, we want you to know if this Islam is for you, Islam is for you. Come to us, you know. But yeah, you don't have to come to us, but like. There's a place for you where you can come. You don't got to worry about being judged. You don't got to worry about uh, your family being judged. You don't yeah. got to be uh, worried about being turned away. Uh, you're going to come in. We're, the com- we're your family, man. Right. We're, we've yes. been, we've been wow. you know, I've been through that. I've been through that situation where I'm the only person that's like me in a room. And if it wasn't for my, my you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choosing this for me, I would have never stuck around. So I would never stuck around, but like now, like we have a brother that he came all the way from Carpentersville today to come to the west side of Chicago to help us clean out the masjid. This is a, a Latino brother. He's not from the area, 
but he he found us huh. came all the way to us because through us he sees people that he can relate to as a matter of fact like subhanallah he wound up being somebody that used to hang out with my brother-in-law in a whole nother city in a whole nother place and it's just the color that, like he wound so, up finding uh, us and and these stories happen over and over and right? he's new so, to the deen he's new to the deen he's new to the he deen. took shahada like a week or two before the COVID hit but, so, and, so no. subhanallah and where was he <laughs> we got a whole group of these brothers that yeah. became muslim right before all this happened so like they still have like going to the message like Whoa, like they've been waiting that's crazy and i'm saying new to the dean and out there from carpenterville all the way to the west side of chicago to put in work because he knows that it pleases allah how many oh, oh, but not not to be judgmental of nothing of course allah haram. this brother is new to the dean he got fire on his uh, on awesome. himself all right so now even today, Alhamdulillah, it was opportunity because the COVID-19 thing, we weren't able to, to be together a lot. So as we were standing there doing other things, you know, the conversation was Tawheed, Allah. the oneness of Allah, the foundation of Islam, uh, Surah Ikhlas. Read it, brother. Read it. I'm going to go over with you every week. So we've, I made another connection with a brother we already connected with because now it, we have to, to, to show them what we know. We have to give them the, the 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 knowledge that we know we have to give it to them so that he could give it to his sons or his brothers or the people that he encounters you know and so alhamdulillah he was out there today i was very happy to see the brother he was in there getting it in you know he's not complaining it was hot he was there the whole time alhamdulillah handing out food you know and cleaning stuff alhamdulillah how did that happen because he heard the message of islam and the people that he heard it from followed up with him. And now he was on the streets of the west side of Chicago cleaning up a masjid in a, in a, in a, uh, b that are preparing to use this space for the women's section of the masjid and for the community center. Subhanallah. Look, look the hasanat, the brother got again, wow. inshallah, for doing this. But he's new to the deen. Brand new baby. Yeah. Brand new to the, uh, to the deen. So it's on, it's on us to, to give him uh, to to give him clear clear understanding of of the deen of primarily of the tawheed the oneness of Allah you know because so many people don't do it and and a lot of people who take the shahada Latinos they go to the masjid and they take shahada okay when you go home take shower salamu alaikum and that's it you know what I mean there's no follow up mm -hmm. oh Allah is gonna follow up. Oh, halal fun. just going to follow up. I mean, I mean. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah. Right, Jazakallah. Thank you wow. so much, guys. Um, is it opening, oh, Ohala, What's the website? I can't remember. Ohalafoundation.org. Foundation.org. Okay. Ohalafoundation.org. We're going to have the um, links to the website, um, places where you can donate, and all the information related to that in the episode description on the podcast and on the YouTube video. Please be sure to check it out, guys. And share it um, as much as you can, please. Yeah, These brothers sure. are working day and night. Let's let's show them some support. I know everyone has that where we have our funds or our, our resources tied up somewhere else, but these brothers are really, really yeah. doing something great. So let's be behind them, inshallah. Like a, a lot of us there. a lot of us got off easy this Ramadan. You're you right. guys didn't you guys didn't get stuck in those <laughs> fundraising uh, <laughs> for forty five minutes for, for well, on Saturday and <laughs> Sunday. So come on. Let's do it. It's time to pony up both fellas. All right. Yes, sir. Alhamdulillah. We'll see y'all next time. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.